welcome to this service of Christian worship. We want to thank our organist, Alan White, for providing our prelude, and we want to welcome you. I imagine there are some familiar faces on the other side of the screen, and there are some new faces joining us as well. Please know that you are welcome. My name is Reverend John Van Nuys. I'm the pastor of Wabash Avenue Presbyterian Church in Crawfordsville, Indiana. My congregation, our governing board this session, our deacons, everyone in our family welcomes your family to this virtual service of Christian worship. We are one in the spirit, although we are separated temporarily by this pandemic, we are nonetheless united and we are one in Christ. So let us now prepare our hearts to come before the Lord in worship. Please join me in our call to worship. It comes from Psalm 106. Praise the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Who can utter the mighty doings of the Lord or declare all God's praise? Happy are those who observe justice, who do righteousness at all times. Save us, O Lord our God, and gather us from among the nations, that we may give thanks to your holy name and glory in your praise. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Let all the people say, Amen. Praise the Lord. Our opening hymn is sung by our choir director, Jenny Fights Swick. Receive now the call to confession. The scriptures tell us that we serve a good, kind, and faithful God who is ready to forgive our sins as we turn them over and uh, give them to God. So let us trust in that mercy. Let us now join together in our prayer of confession. 
Holy God, we so often forget what you expect of us, yet your commandments are clear. I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not worship idols. You shall not misuse God's name. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Honor your father and mother. Do not kill, commit adultery, steal, bear false witness, or covet that which belongs to your neighbor. Merciful God, forgive our sins. Help us return to your way of right relationships and true life. By your Holy Spirit, move within us so that we may embody Christ's teaching of fulfilling your law by loving you with all our heart, soul, and mind, and by loving our neighbors as we love ourselves. Amen. Let us now continue to confess our sins in silence. Amen. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross that we might be dead to sin and alive to all that is good. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Our scripture today comes from the book of 1 John, chapter 5, verse 21. And let us join together in our prayer for illumination that we may rightly hear that scripture. Holy God, speak your word to us and breathe your spirit upon us that we may know the truth and follow the way that leads to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our scripture, again, from 1 John is from chapter 5, just one verse, but there's enough in it for us to work on. Uh, it's verse 21. Children, keep yourselves from idols. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And Jemima, the stars and bars, statues of Robert E. Lee, Stonewall Jackson, and Jefferson Davis. More and more of these are now gone with the wind. Since the gruesome murder of George Floyd, we've seen these things go, which makes some Americans sad because they say this is our history. But this makes other Americans glad because they say these are racist Totems. On July 4, we celebrate America. Today, on July 5, we worship God. What does God think about this Confederate symbol controversy? Does God even care? The Bible says that God does 207 times. There are 207 verses in the Bible that tell us that God decries, condemns, forget, forbids, and hates idols. What's an idol? An idol is something that takes you away from God. Play, pledging allegiance to an idol corrupts and supplants our ultimate loyalty to God. Idols demand unholy offerings from us. And as we dutifully render those to an idol, we defile our relationship to God and we demean ourselves. Can you imagine going to New York City to ground zero and getting there seeing a statue and as you got closer to notice that that is a statue of Osama bin Laden? That'd be a sacrilege. Then why do we have statues here in America honoring Confederate combatants who also slaughtered Americans? Can you imagine going to the Bundestag, to the parliament building in Germany's capital, Berlin, and seeing a statue there of the Gestapo chief, Heinrich Himmler, 
or of Adolf Eichmann, the Third Reich mastermind who perpetrated the Holocaust? No. So why in Washington, D.C., in our capital, in our capital building, are there 11 Confederate monuments? One is of Confederate Vice President Andrew Stevens, who was charged with treason against the United States, who proclaimed this, quote, the Confederacy is founded on the great truth that the subordination of Negroes to whites is natural and normal. Some say these statues are about heritage. Others say they're about hate. Some say the Civil War was about states' rights. Some say the Civil War was about slavery. Who's right? Well, let's go to the source. Louisiana's secession proclamation in 1860 said, quote, the people of the slaveholding South are determined to preserve African slavery. The Texas Declaration of Secession claimed, quote, the servitude of the African race is mutually beneficial to both blacks and whites and is abundantly authorized by the revealed will of God. Apparently, Texas secessionists hadn't been reading their Bibles. In Exodus, God frees slaves, proclaiming, let my people go. Some see the Confederate flag as a symbol of their heritage, not hate. But the man who created the stars and bars, William T. Thompson, knew exactly what his flag stood for. Quote, as a people, we are fighting to maintain the heavenly ordained supremacy of the white race over the colored race. In 1948, when Strom Thurmond ran for president, his Dixiecrat party revived the Confederate flag, which flew at his rallies. The Augusta Courier newspaper observed, quote, the Confederate flag is coming to mean something to everybody now. It means the Southern cause. It is becoming the symbol of the white race and the cause of white people. The Confederate flag means segregation. Looking at these obscured and forgotten historical facts in light of scripture, God, through the prophet Habakkuk, interrogates us today, saying, what use is an idol once its maker has shaped it? A cast image, a teacher of lies. These symbols that are now going away are just that. They are all teachers of lies. We, as white Americans, are not superior to African Americans. God created everyone in the image of God. We're all part of one family, God's family. God is love. Our Savior taught us to love God and love our neighbors, not hate our neighbors. That's why this current controversy is so important to us all, to African Americans and whites, to Southerners and Northerners. There is just no denying that symbols matter. The racial justice advocate Jeffrey Robinson quotes George Orwell, the author of 1984. George Orwell said this, quote, who controls the past controls the future, and who controls the present controls the past. Translation, whoever controls the narrative controls the future. And they control how we go forward. If we ignore or excuse or overlook the ugly, evil parts of our past, we have no chance as a nation of going forward in productive, healing, reconciling ways. 
Getting rid of these symbols, says Robinson, is a start. It gives us, as Americans, the opportunity to begin to deal with the truth. And if we have the moral courage to do that, we can be free. We can be free to work with others and with God to make things better, to begin to make things right for us all, to form a more perfect union so that our nation truly is a shining city set high atop a hill, giving light to the world by doing right by every American and by doing right by our God. Getting rid of idols does that. It clears away falsehood and degradation. Getting right with God and treating each other right unfailingly results in freedom and peace, which rehabilitates and rehumanizes us all. In the book of Ezekiel, God rails against false gods and those who bow down before them. God tears into the idols of all the enemies that threaten Israel, Moab, Edom, Philistia, they all get it. And then God turns to Egypt and says, quote, I will destroy the idols and put an end to all the images in Memphis. Thank heavens, our good God is still doing that in Memphis and Mobile and Richmond and Charlottesville, on NASCAR tracks and on our neighbor's flagpoles, in our hearts and all across this land, this nation, which we all dearly love. So we can all follow God by moving ahead together. That possibility is now here. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. Let us all join in. Let us pray. Holy, gracious, Righteous and eternal God, we come before you this holiday weekend giving thanks for our nation. Lord, we give you thanks for all who protect to serve us, for those who are in foreign theaters of war, and for those who are protecting us in emergency rooms and nursing homes and doctor's offices. Lord, keep them all safe as they serve to protect us nationally and as they serve to protect us personally. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for all who have sacrificed for our freedom. May our liberty not degenerate into license, but may we use our freedom wisely and well to both honor you and those who have sacrificed. Help us, Lord, to make our choices wisely so that we may live unto you by honoring our neighbor. Help us, Lord, make this land a place where all are welcomed, where all are honored, and all are loved. We ask, Lord, that blessing not only for our nation, but for the entire world, for all nations and all peoples. We pray for all of those who are in positions of authority that you may guide them. We ask your grace for our President Donald, for our Governor Eric, and for our Mayor Todd. Lord, in this time of pandemic, lead them that they might lead us, uh, that they might lead us all out of pandemic into a time where this uh, plague is past and we are all alive and whole together. We would ask that you would speed the day when a vaccine and a cure is found guide all research scientists and their work, we pray. 
We ask, Lord, your grace upon all who are sick with the coronavirus, for all those who were infirm in body or in mind. Pour out your healing spirit upon them. Bless their caregivers, guide their doctors, strengthen their families, that your healing, wholeness, and health may abound. We ask, Lord, your grace for all who are grieving. Lord, walk with those who mourn. Through their tears and with time, transform their pain into your peace, we pray. Oh God, we know that there are many who are hungry, many who are forgotten, many who are alone, and many who have no one who is praying for them. We would ask, O oh God, that you would extend your love through our compassion and that you would extend your presence through our care. Lord, we ask that you would now uh, receive not only these spoken prayers, but the unspoken ones we have for persons dear to us and for concerns that overwhelm us. Help us to surrender those before your throne of grace, trusting in your steadfast love and mercy. So Lord, in that mercy, receive now these, our silent prayers. O oh God, we thank you for receiving our prayers and for receiving us as your forgiven, redeemed, and loved children. Unite us now in one voice in the prayer that our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is sung by Jenny Fight Swick. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He hath loosed the faithful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory,
receive now the charge and the benediction. I charge all of us as we celebrate our nation and remember our freedom, I charge us all to remember to use that freedom wisely, to work with God for righteousness, for liberty, for justice, for peace. Because as we do that, we not only honor God, we bless our neighbors, we bless this nation, this land, this planet. Let us all give of our hearts and ourselves today and every day to that glad cause and that holy calling. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord turn a shining face toward you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen.